And welcome back to the Angry Cast, and we're back in to Back to the Future. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We are? How is this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? Well, I don't know. Might take it to a Payless, that's about it. Alright, uh, let's see here. So, of course, we'll just look around and see what we got. Okay. Mm -hmm. Beer! Liquor. Wine. Nice. It's the 80s. Ah, what does that say? A1 Liquors. <laughs> hey, what did I... What? Oh, we can go to liquor. Aw, oh, come on! I want a keg of hey, beer. Whoa! You sneaking into that liquor store, young man! I wasn't sneaking. I was going to walk right in. What happens if we do it again? On second thought, I don't really want to go in there. Well, you're not allowed to go in there, first of all. <laughs> but, ooh, no, it's still the same door. All right, so, okay. So we have this apartment, this lady. I don't know who the hell that lady is, but... It's, uh... Strick... Oh, no. Step away from Whoa. the door! Let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Wow. Get along now! Scat! So... <laughs> this is Strickland. This has got to be... the related to the principal. Uh, hmm. James Keyes. I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. Hi! Wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All skateboarders are hooligans. It's a wow. Fact. Look it up. Wow. Um, no, I've seen before. It's uh, James Tolkien who played Principal Strickland. He also played a character, pretty memorable character, on a show called uh, Remington Steel, which starred Pierce Brosnan, who later became James Bond, um, as a guy named Keyes. I think he was a cop or a detective, but uh, yeah, I, keep, I always want to call him Keyes, but his name's James Tolkien. Uh, I think he's still alive. He's He, he pr was perpetually old man. Uh, you know, he was in... He was in Back to the Future. He's been in a lot of other movies, too. You know, one of those great character actors. He was in Top Gun. You remember him from Top Gun? He was the guy on the boat. I mean, he's the guy on the ship, the commander on the ship. So, yeah. So, okay, uh, here we go. Let's Stay keep going. your business, child! You're child? making me miss Merv! Well, Merv? See, that's the thing. I'm well, not I guess sure it's the 80s I'm here. Still on. Uh, Einstein here brought me, and... Well? <laughs> wow, okay. E. Strickland? You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, wow. aren't ya? Yes, uh, what's wow. old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing do we care I at this point? deduce for myself, slacker. But wait a sec, whoa, whoa, okay, time out, time out, time out. Hold on, hold the phone. Unless something has been changed in the past from what happened in the first movie, is he still a slacker? You know, that's something they never revisited. And I'm sorry, I'm taking time out of this to, to, to you know, this is a whole thing about time travel, but think about it this way. Um, I, could, I could go, like, hours about time travel and movies and time travel and all that stuff. Here's the thing. In the present, eight, 1985, before he went back in time, yeah, he was a slacker, and look, he's... How long is she going to stand there with that mega megaphone? I'm just going to leave her hanging there. But he was a slacker, sure. But since he's come back, his parents are, like, you know, famous now, and I'm sure he's grown up with a more focused life. He's gotten a lot more uh, accolades, I'm sure, in his life. So is he still a slacker? 
is this a big is this a big flaw in this game? Have I discovered a um, continuity error? I don't know. But here's the thing. I don't have a really have a um, point. Can you one. let me in? I've got something to show you. Let me, in. Let me see. I got something to show you, honey. <laughs> That's just horrible. <laughs> uh, let's give her, sh give her the sh let's throw it at her. Let's throw her the shoe. A shoe? Wow! Now what would I want with a? Huh? <gasps> Stay there. Okay, so if she comes out not wearing a shoe. What does that mean that... Ooh. Hi. <laughs> does that mean that she was in the DeLorean? Okay, well, go for it. Leave that creature outside! Oh, you bitch. Sorry, Einstein. Yeah, well, no dogs allowed. Well, he's a good boy. He could just easily walk right in. He could. He just could walk right in. But, um, yeah. So she was, was she in the DeLorean? Is that shoe, that shoe looks like it's been worn. Well, took you long enough. She's obviously not wearing um, it now. There's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ah. ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Mm, much better. So huh. neat Interesting. and orderly. It hasn't yeah, aged. Yeah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm wow. sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so she's gonna uh, have a seat, Sonny. Hmm. What are those? Hey, you kids, put out those cigarettes! Wow. She's one of them. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, newspapers. Look at the pictures of cats. I don't really have anything I can really do other than. Oh. No, wait, wait, oh, oh, oh. Man, she keeps it hot in here. Yeah, I'm sure. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. And don't touch anything. What? That's not the kettle, that's the... Ah, uh, oh, okay, so that's going to be a how to get her out of the room while I do something that I'm not supposed to be doing. Hmm. All right. So while she's gone, I can go look at these papers. So what are these newspapers about? It looks like she's a lot of old Juveniles stuff. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Yeah. Interesting. It's gonna be the same one. Brown mansion destroyed. 1962. Local oh, shopkeeper no, robbed by zombies? Stranded. What? I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. So basically, uh, okay, so what we're going to try to do is figure out... Firm yep. announces plans for Lone Pine Mall. Peabody Ranch to be rezoned for commercial See? development. See? Lone Pine Mall. So things have changed. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. So it looks like we're going to have to... Uh... Oh, what do you eat candy? Uh, the candy looks older than I am. <laughs> uh... Oh, interesting pictures. Jeez. They all look like they've got sticks up there. What's that, dear? Uh, nothing. Yeah, that's peculiar. <laughs> the water still hasn't come to a boil. So basically, she's just gonna be a neb shit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother oh never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. <laughs> Oh my, that's just... Marshall wow. Strickland. Yep, remember him. My grandfather, gunned down by Mad Dog Tannen over a hundred years ago. That's not how I remember it. Yeah, that's true. He, uh, Tannen was taken down by, uh, by me. Well, by Marty. Can't trophies. What are these? 
my editorial trophies. Cat Lover's Quarterly? Huh? It's legitimate journalism. <laughs> Ooh, can I go in the kitchen? Uh, Miss Strickland, how about your tea? Uh, you forgot to turn on the... You! It's spelled with a U! You illiterate vandal! I can only imagine what they're writing on the wall. It'd be hilarious to fi find that out. I don't want to go back outside. Alright, uh, let's, let's just talk to her. And figure out if she can tell us anything about this thing. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Wow, John yes. Cooper reference there. <laughs> Let me dribble off those Bobby Brooks and do as I please, I guess. When did you lose your shoe? There we go. When you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh my. Oh, that shoe! Hi, what a nosy Nelly. No one likes a busybody. Oh, know. screw you, but... lady. You're a reporter. Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh, yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Mm. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes, the day that Speakeasy burned down. <laughs> huh. Speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yeah. Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Huh, interesting. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time oh, that when gangsters like scary. ruled Where's the town been? while honest citizens quaked in their beds. Huh. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch. No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history, my Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe figs about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy <laughs> used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape Reynolds store squats today. Why is it disgusting? So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following well, year, wait a s whoa, what? Wait, whoa, 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 wait, what? The video store must have gone up after the speakeasy burnt down. That was... What the f... Wait a second, are they trying to tell me that a video store was up in the 1930s? Prohibition was ended in 33. That makes no sense whatsoever. Oh my god, I'm starting to lose a little bit of respect here. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever huh. published. So she Get probably has... out. Every single issue. Probably has the one From about the speakeasy. 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. Excuse me? <laughs> I guess somewhere in these stacks, there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. Bragger. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Okay. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on it. <laughs> Lower things. I'm sorry, what? Is that? Tim Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! Wait, Biff had a kid? Alright, I think we got Don't the let idea. Let me keep you from your business. Find it odd that she feels the need to yell into the 
Okay. So, my right. newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Jam? What? All right, we'll get her out of the room. Bitch, get in the kitchen. <laughs> There's the whistle. Surely the water's boiling by now. We never turned it on, honey. Sorry. All right. Clint Eastwood plunges to death huh. on runaway train. All right, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. But when did the speakeasy burn down? I at least need to know the year. Oh. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Can't believe she's actually letting me look through this stuff. Oh, hello. Yeah, I... <laughs> okay, so... Uh... Rebuilt in February 1932. So maybe it wasn't... The fire must have happened before then. Okay. But when? I need a date. So let's Don't look at me. Shut the hell I'm up. Far I'm trying to talk too here. old for you. <laughs> wow. So uh, I guess what we're trying to say is that the building that houses the video store was built the year after the speakeasy burnt down, but the way they presented the information made it sound like the actual video store went in in 1932, which would be impossible because videotape was not um, you know, a thing. So, all right, let's... Excuse me, Miss Strickland? Let's see here. We know what the speakeasy is. I guess somewhere in these stacks, there must be okay, an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally! Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was quite a reporter back Whoop, in the no, day. No. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously, the day after the speakeasy burned down. Okay. So we already Don't know let me stuff. keep you from your business. Yeah, okay. This is going to get repetitive real quick. And it's a problem I have with a lot of these games. Is that they... They have a certain order in which you're supposed to do things, but... There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. They only have a set number of responses or interactions, and you just keep cycling through the same ones over and over again. So now that we know it's 1932, let's hope that this helps us narrow let's it see. down. Okay, there we go. Ground We're broken on ones. site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Okay. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Oh, interesting. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled really? from his... Really? Carl Sagan? Carl Sagan. It's dun, dun, dun. done. Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. Oh, shit. The bed. My newspaper! Hi. Sorry, Sorry excuse Ms. us. Strickland. Uh, let me... Ah! Okay. You've gotten my history out of order. Hmm. Oh, do you know how long it. it'll take to fix what you've done? Don't ah, care. Get out, get out, get out! All right, cool. I got what I needed. Help! Police! Oh I'm God, being thanks. attacked by hooligans! Wow. Oh, a little bit glitchy. Okay. So, <laughs> apparently we went and found... Some clothes. I guess the doc had a lot of clothes left over. Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Um, hmm. Uh, <laughs> didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Uh, we're doing... Grapes of Wrath? Right. Oh, Steinbeck. Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never grape. mind, you don't have to explain. <laughs> I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Man, it hey, just seems like he understands what's you going gotta on. you've got to go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. 
You'll barely know I was gone. Huh. That is something that this movie really... Ready to go, Einstein? Um, did. And did well. Let me actually here do something real quick. Because I'm going to be doing a lot of talking, I think. So that's something that the, that the um the movies really did a a, a very profound um, tribute to was the relationship between a father and a son. And even though, like the father and son dynamic between Marty and his dad in the present of 1985, when he was a you know a, a, a whelp, uh, you know under Biff's thumb, he still cared about him. Because, and I don't know if it's like his memory had been altered when he went back in time and came forward again. Because when in the second movie, when he had that that, that, that bit about his father being killed, I'm hoping not giving anything away. The movie's you know 25 years old by now. But when he gave away, uh, when he found out his father had been killed by Biff, um, it's like he was. And I mean, it might just be a, something of a, a you know he uh, you killed my father. That that's a, that's a natural reaction. But it's like he had an invested. Um, you know, sense of vengeance in him because he really cared for his father. And I'm sure he really did, but it seems like he didn't have that great of a relationship with him prior to the events of 1955 when he went back in time and saw him. I think he developed more of a, a kinship to him once he got to see what he was like growing up. So, but it's just that that's, that's really something they really did focus on in, in, the, in the movie was relationships between fathers and sons, father figures and sons. And Doc was sort of like a father figure to Marty. Kindred spirits, in a sense, because they're both kind of misfits. So, uh, all right, I'm done talking about that. So let's, let's take I've care of this. I've got to turn on the time circuits. All first. right, I did this in the wrong order. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Time circuits. Ah. Flux capacitor. Or fluxy? Uh, fluxy. Uh. All right. Okay. If Doc's going to get killed on June 14th, 1931... Why do we always show up just the day before? before? Show up a couple and of days, get man. Him out. You How don't know where he's going to be at. Doc? You have no idea where the dude's going to be at at the time. From boy, didn't you bring Doc with you? 